from PPS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs and WETA, this is On Our Minds with Ashley and Tyler, a podcast about the teenage experience made by teenagers for teenagers. Because we all need a place to feel heard. Hey, Ashley. Hi. Okay, so I have kind of an interview question for you. Great. I love interview questions. (laughs) So, you know, we've been doing a lot of episodes with On Our Minds, but what would you say has been the highlight of your experience as a host for the podcast so far? Oh, there's so much. I feel like I've loved every part of being a host, but if I were to pick one experience, I would definitely say us going to South by Southwest EDU. Yeah, South by Southwest, that was like truly just an out of this world experience. Basically, a lot of different educators and professionals in the education field come together and they hear panels and discussions from all these different leaders in Austin, Texas. It was just such a cool experience. Like there was really nothing like it, honestly, like getting to meet Hank Green. That experience was so crazy just because that was like my first in-person interview. So a lot of you probably have heard of Hank Green already. But for those of you who haven't, he was a part of starting this YouTube channel called Crash Course. Welcome to Crash Course Chemistry. Last time we left off with Mendeleev believing he had discovered a cosmic mystic reality about the world, but in fact, he had discovered the effects of his worst enemy, tiny invisible particles. And they have like, what, 14 or 15 million subscribers on YouTube. His brother is John Green, who's like written books. Hank Green has also written books. Now he's got this college program with YouTube and Arizona State University. And he's just a really interesting person. And I'm so glad that I got to talk with him. Absolutely. So let's play an excerpt from your conversation with Hank. Hello, Hank Green. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a really pleasure to be here. I've watched so many Crash Course videos and SciShow videos, and it really has had an impact on my education from like middle school to high school. How does it feel to know that something that just started as an idea in your brain becomes so successful and is used in so many classrooms? Honestly, it's like a, it's like a dream world. It doesn't seem real. For a long time, we had no idea how utilized Crash Course was in schools. And it was like one day we woke up and it was like, oh, it's like every school in America uses this. And and like, but we have no idea how to prove that. All I know is if I go to any university in America, people stop me and like everybody has seen my face in their biology class. I'm like, it's the best thing I'll ever do. Sorry to my son. He's he's also the best thing I'll ever do. (laughs) So with more and more teenagers and young people spending more and more time on the internet, Uh, Mental health has become a a serious topic uh, surrounding social media and technology. Mm -hmm. How do you think social media and platforms like YouTube impact mental health of young people? I don't think that the internet is great for people's mental health. I think that the internet is a bad coping strategy. I don't think that it's bad overall, but I think that if you're going through something, if you are feeling like you can't get out of a rut, if if you're depressed, if you're anxious, it's really easy to find a basically this like a, a, a coping strategy that is designed by some of the smartest people on earth to keep you like stuck in it. It's designed to be a rut. It's often not providing like true social connection, um, which is I think a lot of what what folks need when they're in that situation. Do you have any advice for people who are trying to navigate their mental health while also acknowledging that they spend too much time on the internet? I um, force my phone to stop me. There's ways to say I can't use this app after a certain time. It's almost like I'm afraid sometimes to stop looking at the phone because I don't know what's gonna happen in my brain. And so I wanna use my phone until I'm asleep to protect myself from that. And uh, that's no good. <laughs> So I, so you know, I, ha- I, I have rules for when I can use it at night specifically, and I think that that's really important. What advice do you have for any aspiring content creators? Oh, don't do it. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I love seeing people coming up on TikTok, but it's also always terrifying to me to watch these, you know, 15 to 22 year olds just opening themselves up to the whole internet, which is a, it's, it's, it's very scary. I've watched as these people have gained like fairly large audiences and, you know, it, they walk around their college campuses and everybody knows who they are, but they, they, they make like 
an extra five hundred dollars a year. It's not like a like a great way to make money. How I have started to think of it is like it's kind of like being a musician. Very few people who can play guitar well do it professionally. They do it because they like it and because it feels good and because it's a process and because it connects them to something. And so I think that it's it's best when um, it is about creation and community. I have one final question. What advice would you give to a teenager or a young person getting ready to embark on adulthood? Oh man, that transition for me was like both the best and worst part of my life. Like I think that 20, like I'm always worried about the 23 year olds, you know, and people who just graduated from college. I moved to Montana for a girl and uh, I quit my job, which was pretty good to go live in Montana. I was like, I can get a job in Montana at a, at a lab, but there's no labs in Montana. You know, and I had like eight jobs at the same time and they all, you know, they were all like five hours a week. It was a lot of fun, but it was also miserable. But like, it's not supposed to work immediately and you're not supposed to know who you are. Everybody's like, just be yourself. And I'm like, who the heck is that? I don't know who I am. Yeah. Stop, I'm 42 years old, I still don't know who I am. Try and stay connected with friends. Try and spend time with people that you like and who like you. Listen to what works, not what your brain is telling you works. <laughs> if that makes sense at all. Try and pay attention to, 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 the, to the good moments. Write them down because there's gonna be hard times and they're gonna outweigh, they're gonna seem like much bigger than they are, I think. That was really great advice. I'm gonna take a lot of weight from that personally. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. One thing that Hank talked about was that everyone said to him, be yourself. Strangely enough, that phrase came up the following day in another interview at the conference. Yeah, we were joined by a number of Austin area student reporting lab students, and Ingrid Smith, who goes to McCallum High School, interviewed former U.S. Poet Laureate Joy Harjo and illustrator Michaela Goad about their new children's book called Remember. Before we play an excerpt from that interview, first, here's Joy Harjo reading her poem, Remember, which is the text of the new children's book. Remember, remember the sky you were born under. Know each of the star's stories. Remember the moon, know who she is. Remember the sun's birth at dawn, that is the strongest point of time. Remember sundown in the giving away tonight. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are evidence of her life and her mother's and hers. Remember your father, he is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are, red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth. We are earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk with them. Listen to them. They are alive poems. Remember the wind. Remember her voice. She knows the origin of this universe. Remember that you are all people and all people are you. Remember that you are this universe and this universe is you. Remember that all is in motion is growing as you. Remember language comes from this. Remember the dance language is that life is. Remember. Miss Harjo, how have the themes and messages conveyed through your poetry changed? It was first published in 81, and, and she had some horses. But I wrote that poem, I think I was still an undergrad at the University of New Mexico. And somebody asked me, because I was becoming visible as a poet, even though I was a student and just beginning, what would I say to a younger native poet? And that poem came, came and I've come to realize that uh, Often what comes through in our arts and poetry and in, in all of our arts is it's often beyond us. We grow into it. So I felt and I feel that that poem is, it had a larger mission than me and I just helped bring it in. I had to finesse it, you know, like you do. Like the spirit of the poem came in and then I had to make a little place for it to live. That poem has gone all kinds of places without me. <laughs> you know, it's a, and it's, uh, it's even on the Lucy spacecraft right now going heading towards Jupiter's moons. And so what I've learned through the years is that I'm a, 
I'm kind of a, I wouldn't call it necessarily a messenger, but I stay open to what it is. I listen and I help bring stuff through. It often, it teaches me. It's often things I've not heard before in a certain way, but that's what's so compelling about being an artist is that you're listening in new fresh places and going fresh places in your expression. As a student journalist, is there any advice for American teenagers or young natives who are interested in getting involved with the arts? That's my next book, <laughs> is advice for young people coming up. How I failed and how, I, how I'm alive now. <laughs> but you know, somebody gave me an advice. It was one of these wise teachers from a Pueblo in New Mexico, older woman, and she, she looked at me and I was going through my dramas and she looked at me, she says, be yourself. And of course I thought, ah, oh, that's easy. You know, that's simple, it's too simple. But it was turned out to be the most profound advice because I remember being a teenager, you know, I still have PTSD <laughs> being a teenager. And that's, it's so profound. If I could just be, you just be yourself. Well, what does that mean? But that's an incredible journey. Mm -hmm. But ultimately you have to honor who you are. It doesn't matter what your story, who did what or shame. Or there's, we all go through stuff. Some of us go through more than other. Sometimes, you know, I remember being suicidal and, and, and cutting and all of that kind of thing. But I think if I had really taken in Be Yourself, then I would know that whatever happened, it's part of the story. And it depends on what you do with the story. You can use a story to destroy yourself or you can use a story to, to grow into the most magnificent person that you were meant to be because we all were, we were all put here as part of this story and we were all given gifts and they may not look, they're not going to look like the person next to you. Even if you have five young journalists wanting to be journalists, everybody is different. Every poet is different and every uh, artist, we all have, everybody has their gifts. So it's important to honor that and there are things you don't understand, maybe you will someday. There are some things we might never understand. Sometimes it's hard to make peace with that. Joy Harjo mentioned suicidal ideation and cutting. If you or someone you know needs help, text 988 to get free and confidential support from the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. I love that Joy Harjo talked about what it means to be yourself. For me personally, I'm about to go to college. Something that's really been on my mind is like how I'm gonna reinvent myself, like the kind of clothes I wanna wear, the kind of hairstyle that I wanna have or whatever, or what I wanna look like, or the kind of like personality I kinda wanna shape into or something like that, or my friend groups and all that stuff. But also at the same time, like it kind of can get easy to like begin to align yourself with what you think that other people would like about yourself versus what you like most about yourself, you know? I definitely agree. And I think it says something that two of these massively successful, inspirational people kind of give the same advice of be yourself. Because no matter what place of life I'm in, I never want to lose my authenticity. I never want to lose who I am. You know, even these, you know, people who we consider like, you know, big celebrities and, you know, it may seem like they have their lives all together or whatever, but like everybody's still, you know, working on themselves and figuring themselves out. And I just want to say, Ashley, you know, when we met each other for the first time in person at South by Southwest, you are so talented and smart and kind and you're amazing. Tyler, that's so sweet. And thank you so much. I want you to know that I feel like the exact same thing applies to you. Like I so, so, so enjoyed being able to talk to you in person. Up next, the episode we recorded in front of a live audience at South by Southwest EDU's podcast stage. I love this episode. Woo! Credits. Today's episode was produced by lead podcast producer Bridget Gansky. Editorial director Marie Cusick and executive producer Leah Clapman. Theme music by Jackson Tiedens. Additional music by Blue Dot Sessions. On Our Minds is supported by the Arthur Vining Davis Foundations. If you or someone you know needs help, we have a list of resources at studentreportinglabs.org slash mental health resources.